Metcalf's Law is the last piece of the puzzle to explain PTSD. And so what it is, is uh, <clears throat> it's a number of connections you have, uh, network, and so the more points there is, the more people, the more resources uh, in mental health, the better of a chance you have to survive. And <clears throat> I'm going to suggest that that is not limited to uh, mental health professionals, but uh, different different uh, groups, resources, lawyers, um, whatever the case might be. And so those numerous resources, I think, is explained by Linda Fletcher, epidemiologist. Um, when she talks about uh, the inbreeding of ideas and so <clears throat> you might have mental health professionals who learned things certain things and maybe stuck in this train of thought and so therein develops the inbreeding of an idea whereas if you have lawyers involved it seems any lawyer i've spoken to clearly understands the trauma I've survived and and uh, but mental health professionals have largely struggled or failed to understand the level of trauma I've suffered and so uh, and that's just lawyers versus uh, mental health professionals as an example. But uh, the more resources from various fields, not only mental health, uh, would improve somebody's chance of survivability, of surviving suicide. And so, and that's not just in mental health professionals, but... Um, um, Dr. Jonathan Shade talks about how what's crucially important is the support groups, the peer support groups. And I've experienced that, and I would suggest that it's like meeting with a dozen people who understand who've been there and the other side of that is out of the 12 that you meet with over that hour in a peer support group is you might get one piece of advice or comment that may help you understand your own struggles and in that hour you might meet or hear um, 12 or more comments that make sense and explains, helps explain your own struggles. And so in a one-on-one -on -one setting, it could take a year to get 12 pieces of advice that helps you piece the puzzle. But in a peer support group, you might get the equivalent in one hour. And so, <clears throat> and not only that, but Dr. Ockberg talks about the, the future of mental health and how The future of mental health would have several mental health professionals meeting with one individual. And I'm going to suggest that some of those may be subject matter experts. And something I've struggled with is at the thought or suggestion that 
because currently psychologists are only supposed to meet with one patient at a time and so the problem with that is I may have a good therapist and he or she may feel that she or he isn't um, isn't well suited and so and that maybe there's more or better or different services that a different mental health professional can help with but the problem is it may take a year or 12 years to meet somebody who could actually help and so then <clears throat> what uh, therein again I agree with Dr. Ockberg that <clears throat> somebody should be able to meet with more than one professional at the same time uh, and so in this if I or you have a, a good therapist you could also meet with more than one therapist so that until you can find somebody who's well suited or has the training and knowledge to actually help you or and so but then the other aspect to that is somebody may have three or four or ten different subject specific mental health injuries each requiring each may require a subject matter expert and so, so then, should somebody meet, is it reasonable for somebody to meet with one professional healing one injury at a time over a course of 20 years? Or should it be, like Dr. Ockberg suggests, what I agree with, in that if it was mental health intensive care, if mental health intensive care was treated like physical injuries in intensive care a person would have several mental health professionals treating each specific injury at the same time often at the same time and so <clears throat> like physical wounds so i think there's a lot of uh changes that needs to happen and and, and this all of this ties into metcalf's law what linda fletcher suggests um i think is best described the inbreeding of ideas i think is best avoided by metcalf's law in that the more connections you have to various groups resources supports um avoids the inbreeding of ideas so um, if something, if somebody from a specific field doesn't understand something, if you can meet with several professionals of various fields, not only in mental health, um, like the lawyers, almost every lawyer, I've, the few lawyers that have spoken to me, um, have completely understood my s severe trauma but many mental health professionals seem to struggle to understand that uh, and I would go so far as to say that I've only met one mental health professional and he happened to be jailed important to note he grew up in South Africa and he happened to be jailed six times before he was eight years old And so, I think to avoid what Linda Fletcher describes the inbreeding of ideas is uh, is Metcalf's law, and 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 that also ties into what uh, both Jonathan Shea and uh, Frank Ockberg talk about. And uh, and I think 
the reluctance to accept anything different is best uh, explained by what I've talked about. What I've recently discovered is uh, the Semmelweis reflex. Uh, and that's the reflex to refuse new information or evidence. And so I think uh, I think it's going to take uh, some work to encourage society to accept new information or evidence. To accept that uh, Metcalfe's law avoids the inbreeding of ideas. Uh, encourages what Dr. Frank Ockberg describes as the need the future of psychology would have several mental health professionals um, likely treating one patient and what Jonathan Shea suggests is uh, Dr. Jonathan Shea is um, the how he views his role as somebody who sweeps the floor and turns lights off. Um, but the real support is is in the peer support groups, and uh, I think I think the one on one is absolutely required. But the peer support group is is important because of the clues somebody may have to answer some of the questions or um, the puzzle to piece to put the piece to a puzzle together as the the peer support group uh, somebody might get one piece of the puzzle or or a dozen pieces of the puzzle in an hour whereas one on one in a one on one setting that could take a year to achieve a similar result and so I think Metcalf's law is is the answer anyway I'm gonna go struggle through another day and uh I think all of this explains why 22 vets commit suicide every day and why I uh, <clears throat> two times I could not function. The first time I recovered as a result of the Fort McMurray forced fire evacuation and the second time and the first time I healed to function within three months of all the many supports I've had the second time took me three years to get to this point without supports and, and there and again reflects on Metcalf's law and so <clears throat> Because I've understood, because I've come to understand the struggle to function, the, the, I would say the second time, and it was a process of getting there, but the second time by February 2019, I could no longer walk, talk, think, um, read, write, shower, more, and... I couldn't spend money and I, I still have to heal to spend money and uh, I still struggle to write but I largely can't read still <clears throat> and so there's things I can do and there's many things I can't like somebody with a broken leg can hobble around on a on a good leg but would hardly bear sitting on a broken leg 
So there's things I've done emotionally, like I've housed three people who largely can't function, and each of them are doing better. Great improvements. One of them is after two months housed with the various supports I know they need. There's many I haven't been able to provide yet but uh, in a timely fashion but uh, after two months one of them sang twice last week and, and was painting on the weekend and, and just uh, I'm absolutely certain she'll make a full recovery and uh, and because everybody refused to help me I figured I'd lead by example and and show others how to help somebody get back on their feet to function, to heal to function. And so, um, in a few months, I think we'll be able to take more patients to, to help them heal to function. Who, for lack of better words, walk in circles talking to themselves. I've been there twice. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Thanks.